Hi, you're looking at a three-phase Colchester lathe coolant pump and it's running purely off single phase so there's no variable frequency drive or additional electronics involved other than a capacitor okay which I've added across one of the windings so in this video we're going to have a look at the motor we'll have a look at the wiring uh, I'll also give you a couple of references uh, just so you don't have to take my word for it I have a couple of references here which uh, show you the, uh, the, the circuit diagrams. Uh, we'll also have a look at some other options, uh, how I've uh, tested, how I've identified the winding. So hopefully uh, it's gonna give you most, if not all of the things that you would need to do a similar conversion. And uh, yeah, so let's just quickly turn the motor off, be a little bit quieter. In fact, we'll just flip it on again in just a moment so you can see that it does start without a problem. I mean, the thing about a three phase motor is that uh, in theory, you could run it as a single phase, but uh, it won't be able to start itself because it needs it needs a, a phase offset on one of the windings. So, you know, that that's what the capacitor does. And that capacitor is a run capacitor. It, there's no like a centrifugal switch or anything because it is purely a, a as a three phase motor. So let's just quickly start it and then stop it again. Yeah, so it started no problem at all. Incidentally, the first time I did this yesterday, I had the uh, pipe, of course, I had the pipe in the wrong slightly too high and my goodness yeah it went flying everywhere but anyway uh let's have a quick look at the plate uh, so the wiring plate will go back on there uh, by the way this coolant pump is going to be for sale uh, in due course because I, I really you know like yeah i do some machining but i don't need this volume of uh, coolant it would be far too messy at home so uh there we go uh you can see that it's a colchester coolant pump uh, no surprise there. Uh, the the current uh, 0.12 amps or 0.21 amps. That depends on whether you're running at the higher or the lower voltage. So higher voltage, uh, lower current. Uh, lower voltage, higher current. Uh, it's 50 hertz. So you know 50 hertz UK and three phase. Okay. So there's no on this plate. There's no option uh, or indication that you can run it single phase, but you can. Now. Of course, you could use a variable frequency drive, you know, single phase in, three phases out. Would work perfectly well, um, but, you know, who needs the all the benefits of a three phase uh, converter, really, and variable frequency drive? You don't need things like, you know, forward reverse, you know, slow, slow start or anything like that. Uh, so it's it's overkill, really, to use a variable frequency drive. Hence, you know, just a single capacitor to me seems to be just a trick. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that this is, is going to work well for someone who's got the sort of motor which uh, doesn't need a large amount of torque to get started. I mean, you wouldn't want to do this, say, on a, on a large compressor or any machinery where there was a lot of um, stuff to get moving. So there's the uh, representation of the circuit diagram showing how I've got this wired up. Um, this is the incoming single phase. It doesn't matter whether you've got live or neutral around the other way. And it doesn't matter whether we're across that winding or that winding either. Um, the uh, the incoming feed just needs to be across one of the windings. A capacitor needs to be across one of the other two windings. Now, I haven't tried it, but I would believe that if I were, say, to keep that capacitor lead on that connection and just pop that one over there, then I'd reverse the motor. I don't think it actually makes is going to make any difference for this sort of pump, which direction it's running in. I don't think it's going to like try and suck backwards or anything like that. I think these ones, uh, I don't, I can't remember the name of the type of the pump, but basically it's just kicking the water out or kicking the fluid out um, from the pump in either direction. So that's the way that I've got it configured at the moment. And I've got it configured. This is called Delta, uh, but originally it came as star. And most motors that you're going to see, um, or certainly that I see, uh, that can be configured, three-phase motors that can be configured in star or delta. Let's see if I can just quickly find that. Um, yeah, they have. Uh, they normally have like six uh, screw-down terminals, like so. And then if you're going to have them in star, then basically um, each one of the three windings gets brought together as a star. You know, it's like like that. Um, and uh, these 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 solid black lines here just represent um, links that you can just screw down between them, um, or you can you can move the links around. And you can have it as delta, like so. 
And so you'll see that the current, you know, is going to go from that point down through there, through there, through there, through there, through there, like that. OK, so. Um, yeah, so most motors, in my experience, have those six, um, six um, connection points. However, this motor has or had uh, because I've taken out those uh, those wiring posts. Uh, I don't know that we can very easily see it at the moment, uh, but it had four. And the reason it's got four, even though it suggests uh, that you can, you know, by the voltages, voltages suggest that you can have it in delta. Um, the, the problem is that um, the way that it's, it's made, it only has four uh, terminal points. OK, so it's got one, two, three, and then the fourth one is just the star. So, you know, by default, they are just making this really essentially as, as a star configured motor. So you need to break that star. I mean, it's not difficult that, that it's just the three wires just come onto the one mounting post. So uh, and uh, it's easy, very easy to test, actually, with a multimeter. I just using multimeter, I just went from the star point from those three common wires and I just checked the resistance across there and I found it's 325. And then I just uh, keep it on that common point. I just check that one. And, and sure enough, you know, all three were identical. And of course, uh, if you have two resistances in series, then you're just going to have to sum of them. So, you know, you could add that one to that one. So that will be 650 M. So, yeah, sure enough, you know, I confirmed that that was, you know, what I was expecting uh, was what I actually had. So I broke that star by just taking those three wires off the post. Um, I then... Uh, decided that I was going to use these Wago terminal blocks. They're, they're really easy to use. Uh, it allows me to reconfigure this motor very easily while I'm experimenting. Uh, I could possibly uh, go back to the old terminal post and maybe maybe do that. But you know, really, you know, I've got a lot of, a lot of these. By the way, actually, I should say I'm I'm saying Wago. Some of them probably are genuine Wago, and some are Wago like. Okay. Um, yeah. Cheap import ones but i mean they to be honest uh you really can't tell or i can't tell the difference anyway so having broken the point i've then got um three windings that i can easily identify you know even if you you drop the wires somewhere um you can easily with a multimeter you can identify uh a winding you just go through um each one of the connections and then uh, i need to then uh, take the end of one winding and then it goes to the start of the next and just go around in that um, loop like that. You'll notice that, say, on this uh, point here where the live comes in, I've got one, two, three wires. So uh, that's why I've used these uh, three way blocks there. And uh, so this one's got three. It's got the two windings, plus it's got uh, a lead going to the capacitor, which are these white wires you know i'm this is just for my own testing purposes i'm going to rewire this so you've got the capacitor there and then this one is the only one that needs uh, a slightly bigger connection block one two three four okay um now of course if i decided to move this capacitor lead over to the other side then i would just need to move that connector block over so but you know it's, it's trivial anyway no problem at all um it might be worthwhile just pointing out that that um, rating is probably higher than it needs to be. Uh, I haven't measured the voltage across the capacitor yet. I might do it at some point, but I know that that is going to easily meet the requirement. We're on 250 uh, or I'm sorry, 240 volts uh, RMS. So a peak um, voltage is something like 340, whatever. Um, but yeah, so that that that's fine. Uh, you could possibly get away with a, a smaller, um, lower voltage racing capacitor. But to be honest, you know, that, that's not a big, particularly big capacitor anyway, because it's a small value. It's only four microfarads. Now, I think I could probably have gone less. Uh, I could probably gone down to about two farads or, or two microfarads, not two farads, two microfarads or less. Uh, and now I've 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 seen a lot of rubbish quoted on YouTube videos about this, and you know people are suggesting calculations which um, I don't think are based on fact. I, I like to see something published. Now this this guy uh, Jim Cox got two books here. These books are widely available in the UK, and I guess you can get them elsewhere as well. They're only cheap. Um, can't remember, like I don't know, six pounds or something like that. Okay. 
they're they're a bit they're a bit dated, but they're they're still good. And so you know they give you well okay this 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 wiring diagram is for something slightly different when we've got a um we've got a uh, a run that's uh, we've got a run and a start capacitor there which isn't that one so let me just see if I can find an equivalent uh, there we go okay so that's that's the circuit that I'm using so read the book tells you about that and then also gives you a table of suggested capacitor values depending on loading depending on various things you can read through this you know buy the book i don't want to infringe copyright um but the only only problem with this table in this particular case is the smallest motor rating is a uh, quarter horsepower 0.18 kilowatt uh this the, you know this is a very small motor so um the sort of values that are being quoted here you know going down to you know seven and a half microfarads i think probably when i'm looking at this and reading the text as well probably about two microfarads would have been better but you know that that's what i've got um incidentally and i think hopefully this goes without saying that you can't use a standard electrolytic capacitor like a dc electrolytic capacitor in this particular application because we're using ac so do get the books um there's a lot of useful information in there now, um, I should, I suppose I should just point out, it's just reminding me, just looking at this, I should point out why I've got this here, because if you remember uh, on the motor plate, it does say three phase, 400 or 220 or 440 volts. So um, the 440 volts or 400 volts is assuming uh, that you that you are using the star configuration and you can, if you want, you can continue using star configuration at a lower voltage. And I've, I've done so. I've tried it. So uh, just to quickly test whether this pump worked at all, I used a variable frequency drive, which has uh, which outputs three phases. And I kept this star configuration. There's nothing wrong with that, inherently wrong with that. Uh, but um, if you do that, so... Uh, you're no longer using what the expected voltage is. The expected voltage is 440 volts, 50 hertz. So I've dropped to 54% of that value. Uh, so a lower voltage and uh, reading around on this a little bit from a reasonably authoritative source. That is the manufacturer of, um, or rather the one of the distributors of one of the uh, um, VFDs in the UK, they're suggesting that you need to stay on this curve. OK, so if, say, you reduce the voltage by 54 uh, percent, then you need to reduce your frequency as well. Stay on that curve. Uh, their explanation was otherwise, if you don't do that, say, if you want to continue uh, running at 50 hertz, but at the lower voltage, then uh, their explanation was overfluxing of the motor, which I'm not going to get into because I can't really explain that. But uh, it's recommended against doing that. Now, what have I done since uh, doing this? So uh, I've wired it up, tried it out, seemed to work just fine. I've kept an eye on temperatures of the mo of the motor, of the capacitor. Uh, I've taken some current readings and um, you know, just just listen to the motor as well. You know, are there any problems? Are there any problems starting? Uh, does it sound like it's running smoothly? And uh, for me, uh, I'm entirely satisfied with it. The motor, I know it's uh, been turned off for a while now, but the motor was always running quite cool. By the way, the temperature in here at the moment is pretty chilly. OK, so uh, seven degrees in here at the moment. And this was running at something like 12 or something like that. Now it's cooling down a little bit. Uh, the capacitor was 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 never heating up at all. OK. Um, and so, yeah, if if it's working for like for hours, I suppose it might get a little bit warmer. Well, I'm sure it would get a little bit warmer. But even if it hits 40, 50 degrees, that's really uh, not a concern uh, with a, a motor. They're meant to warm up. I mean, it's not a desired property, but they're expected warm up. They're not. Um, they're not 100% um, efficient devices. So I'm quite happy with this. Um, I need to now do a little bit of rewiring just to tidy that up. Uh, I need to, at the moment, my mains is just coming in on these two brown wires, which is not ideal. So I need to have uh, some um, UK color-coded wires there. 
Um, not too sure what I'm going to do with the capacitor because really that needs to go in a box. And of course, with all this fluid by the side, it would need really it needs to be IP rated. So uh, I'll have a think about that. But I'm, you know, if I wanted to use this as a uh, coolant pump, I'd be more than happy running it on single phase from now on. OK, um, hopefully that's useful. If you've got any questions about doing conversions, do bear in mind that I'm not an expert on this. Um, I might be able to look in the book for you to answer questions. Um, I might be able to give you some other, uh, maybe not advice, but uh, my experience of using variable frequency drives to try three phase motors and doing some other stuff as well. So anyway, it'd be nice to hear from you. Do feel free to leave a comment and do please subscribe. Thanks very much for watching.